and Scar, also known as Ansgar, Saint and Scar, Saint Ansgar or Oscar, was Archbishop of Hamburg Bremen in the northern part of the Kingdom of the East Franks. Ansgar became known as the Apostle of the North because of his travels and the See of Hamburg received the missionary mandate to bring Christianity to Northern Europe. Ansgar was the son of a noble Frankish family, born near Amiens. After his mother's early death, Ansgar was brought up in Corby Abbey, and was educated at the Benedictine Monastery in Picardy. According to the Vita Ansgarae, when the little boy learned in a vision that his mother was in the company of Mary, mother of Jesus, his careless attitude toward spiritual matters changed to seriousness. His pupil, successor, and eventual biographer Rimbert considered the visions to have been Ansgar's main life motivator. Ansgar acted in the context of the phase of Christianization of Saxony begun by Charlemagne and continued by Charlemagne's son and successor, Louis the Pious. In 822 Anscar became one of many missionaries sent to found the Abbey of Corvey in Westphalia, where he became a teacher and preacher. A group of monks including Anscar were sent further north to Jutland with the King Harold Clock, who had received baptism during his exile. With Harold's downfall in 827 and Anscar's companion Opert having died, their school for the sons of courtiers closed and Anscar returned to Germany. Then in 829, after the Swedish King Bjorn and Hauga requested missionaries for his Swedes, King Louis sent Anscar, now accompanied by Friar Whitmer from New Corby as his assistant. Anscar preached and made converts, particularly during six months at Birka, on Lake Maleren, where the wealthy widow Moore Freiborg extended hospitality. Anscar organized a small congregation with her and the King's steward, Herger, as its most prominent members. In 831 Anscar returned to Louis Court at Worms and was appointed to the Archbishopric of Hamburg-Bremen. This was a new archbishopric, incorporating the bishoprics of Bremen and Verden and with the right to send missions into all the northern lands, as well as to consecrate bishops for them. Anscar received the mission of evangelizing pagan Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. The King of Sweden decided to cast lots as to whether to admit the Christian missionaries into his kingdom. Anscar recommended the issue to the care of God, and a lot was favorable. Anscar was consecrated as a bishop in November 831, with the approval of Gregory IV. Before traveling north once again, Anscar traveled to Rome to receive the pallium directly from the Pope's hands, and was formally named legate for the northern lands. Ebbo, Archbishop of Reims had previously received a similar commission, but would be deposed twice before his death in 851, and never actually traveled so far north, so the jurisdiction was divided by agreement with Ebbo retaining Sweden for himself. For a time Anscar devoted himself to the needs of his own diocese, which was still a missionary territory and had few churches. He founded a monastery and a school in Hamburg. Although intended to serve the Danish mission further north, it accomplished little. After Louis the Pious died in 840, his empire was divided and Anscar lost the Abbey of Turholt, which Louis had given to endow Anscar's work. Then in 845, the Danes unexpectedly raided Hamburg, destroying all the church's treasures and books. And Scar now had neither sea nor revenue, and many helpers deserted him. The new king, Louis III's son, Louis the German, did not re-endow Turholt to Enscar, but in 847 he named the missionary to the vacant diocese of Bremen, where Enscar moved in 848. However, since Bremen had been suffered into the Bishop of Cologne, combining the sees of Bremen and Hamburg presented canonical difficulties. After prolonged negotiations, Pope Nicholas I would approve the union of the two dioceses in 864. Through this political turmoil, Anscar continued his northern mission. The Danish civil war compelled him to establish good relations with two kings, Horik the Elder and his son, Horik II. Both assisted him until his death. Anscar was able to secure permission to build a church in Schleswig north of Hamburg and recognition of Christianity as a tolerated religion. Anscar did not forget the Swedish mission, and spent two years there in person, averting a threatened pagan reaction. In 854, Anscar returned to Sweden when King Olaf ruled in Birka. According to Rimbert, he was well disposed to Christianity. On a Viking raid to Apuel in Courland, the Swedes plundered the Koronians. And Scar was buried in Bremen in 865. His successor as Archbishop, Rimbert, wrote the Vita Ansgarae. He noted that Anscar wore a rough hair shirt, lived on bread and water, and showed great charity to the poor. Adam of Bremen attributed the Vita et Miracula of Wilhad to Anscar and Hesta Hammenbergensis Ecclesi, 
Ansgar is also the reputed author of a collection of brief prayers pigmenta. Pope Nicholas I declared Ansgar a saint shortly after the missionary's death. The first actual missionary in Sweden and the Nordic countries, Ansgar was later declared patron of Scandinavia. Relics are located in Hamburg in two places, Street, Mary's Cathedral and Street, Ansgar's and Street, Bernard's Church. Statues of Bishop Ansgar stand in Hamburg, Copenhagen, and Ribe, as well as a stone cross at Birka. His feast day is 3rd of February, as it is in the Church of England. St. Anskar statue in Hamburg Although a historical document and primary source written by a man whose existence can be proven historically, the Vita Ansgar I aims above all to demonstrate Ansgar's sanctity. It is partly concerned with Ansgar's visions, which, according to the author Rimbert, encouraged and assisted Ansgar's remarkable missionary feats. Through the course of this work, Ansgar repeatedly embarks on a new stage in his career following a vision. According to Rimbert, his early studies and ensuing devotion to the ascetic life of a monk were inspired by a vision of his mother in the presence of Mary, mother of Jesus. Again, when the Swedish people were left without a priest for some time, he begged King Horat to help him with this problem, then after receiving his consent, consulted with Bishop Gobert to find a suitable man. The two together sought the approval of King Louis, which he granted when he learned that they were in agreement on the issue. Anskar was convinced he was commanded by heaven to undertake this mission and was influenced by a vision he received when he was concerned. About the journey, in which he met a man who reassured him of his purpose and informed him of a prophet that he would meet. The abbot Adelhard, who would instruct him in what was to happen. In the vision, he searched for and found Adelhard, who commanded, Islands, listen to me, pay attention, remotest peoples, which Inskar interpreted as God's will that he go to the Scandinavian countries as most of that country consisted of islands. And also, when I will make you the light of the nation so that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth was added, since the end of the world in the north was in Swedish territory. Thanks for watching.